Legendary commentator Miola O'Hare's autobiography, My Life and Times, will be published this weekend. A tribute dinner to honour Miho for his contribution to Irish sport will be held tomorrow night in the Burlington Hotel in Dublin. His unmistakable voice has not been heard, of course, since he suffered a stroke in 1985. Brian Carthy looks back at the career of a broadcasting legend who will always be affectionately remembered as the voice of Gaelic Games. Michal O'Hare's clarion call to the faithful which came out of the wireless in the 40s, 50s and 60s. Then the ball was in and the game was on and for the next hour the nation was transfixed as Michal painted word pictures of the genius of Christy Ring and Sean Purcell, the power of Joe Kilhan or the Gunner Brady, the ingenuity of Kevin Armstrong and Jimmy Murray or the accuracy of Nicky Rackard or Richie Bennis. Limerick have all moved up around the Tipperary goal. If Richie sends this one over the bar, well, they have won the Munster title. If he doesn't, well, we live to fight another day. Referee gone down into the parallelogram. Richie Bennis lifting, striking, sending the ball high and sending it to the right. Goes over the bar. It's down with the bar. It's a point. People who had never been to Croke Park saw through Michal's eyes as he sat in the green box beside the Hogan stand, looking out on a pitch where players did solo runs of up to 50 yards in about 3.5 seconds, or occasionally engaged in shamozzles or argy-bargy. And irrespective of the score, the game, according to Michal, was not over yet. Excitement was the key to his performance, and we got plenty of that. Back now come the down men to attack the free for down and it's 50 yards out from the Kerry goal on the far side of the field. P.J. McElroy to take it. He kept it a short one but intercepting the post short one is Mick O'Connell who in turn is beaten by P.J. McElroy. McElroy sends a high ball into the goal and it's Mick O'Connell and it's the goal! Tony Brennan going up and he grabs the ball. Gets a shot right across the goal now and Matt Kerrigan has it in front of the goal. He's been tackled there. He gets the ball back to Mickey's face. There you saw the goal! Michal's weekend began at the track, and it was from Fairy House, the Curra, Bal Doyle and Phoenix Park, we heard of the emergence of M.V. O'Brien, P.J. Prendergast and Tom Draper, and the exploits of those two great Irish combinations, Aubrey Brabison and Cottage Drake, and Pat Taff and Darkle. Cottage Drake is taking them on now as they come to the open ditch. They're jumping it together. They're up, they stretch, and they're over. But it's Happy Home clearing that fence in front, about a length clear of Cottage Drake going very, very easily. Coloured schoolboy moving up now to pass Flaxton and with Happy Home and front of to go. And it's Arkle, clear of great rates. Arkle, a pat tap really pushing him out to say, there you are, there's Arkle, and there he is. Michal O'Hare was a major phenomenon, not only in Irish broadcasting, but in Irish life. In an age when very little surprises and the world audience can watch live as lumps are hacked out of the moon's surface or the Berlin Wall. It's hard now to appreciate the importance of Michal O'Hare to the people of Ireland. One man who said it best was the late Abbey actor Michal O'Brien. It was here, it was a must, if you're interested at all. I mean, there was nothing else, I mean, no matter what you were doing. I mean, you'd, you'd leave the bloody hay there to go and listen to him, you know, or if you're going fishing or anything like that, you'd cancel everything. It was only an hour and a half, and you had to listen to him. He says, he says, it's part of, it's part of life. It's the only life we had. The great Brian Carthy reporting on the possibly even greater Mihol O'Hare.